All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to show you how easy it is to look at changes across the different data sets from the Sentinel-1 imagery. So the Sentinel-1 imagery, as mentioned, is freely available on ESA's website, and we've downloaded three data sets here. We have February 23rd, we have March 7th, and we have April 12th. So let's take a quick look at a, uh, the, the changes in, in terms of the grayscale. So what we can do is we can simply load one data set on top of the other. So we can load the HH channel from February 23rd, the HH channel from March 7th, and the HH channel from April 12th. Now what's interesting in this area here, once again, this is the Montreal uh, area. So this is the island of Montreal, and this is the southern part of Montreal. There's, there's three acquisitions. The, the first one on February 23rd, so we've looked up the uh, temperature the local temperature on the, at the time of acquisition. So on February 23rd, it's minus 19 degrees Celsius. And if we look at the uh, temperature from March 7th, which is the second acquisition, roughly at 6 p.m., we're at minus 3, roughly, Celsius. And then if we go to April 12th at uh, 6 p.m., we're actually way above zero. We're at 14 degrees Celsius. So there's quite a bit of difference here. And of course, this is the, the spring season and, and, and essentially the uh, the thaw has occurred over the course of these three acquisitions. So if I, if I order these um, logically in terms of when they were captured, and I'll just zoom in here to a particular location, we can see the difference in the uh, radar response. So what I'm looking at is HH, and you can see that these op open fields here are quite dark on the first image. Now that's of course because the radar energy is essentially bouncing pretty much right off the snow, uh, and, and not penetrating or not getting much uh, surface roughness from the actual uh, grass because there is no grass, it's snow that's on top of the features in this case. So it's acting like a mirror. If we look at the March 7th image, we see pretty much the same thing, not a lot of change there. Then when we go to the April 12th image, we see a really big difference and that's of course because the snow is gone and the surface roughness is now dominating the scattering for those particular features. Now in terms of looking at actual changes, we can visualize the changes between the different dates. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll compose what's called a, a two-color multi-view. So it's a simple way to look at changes, so objects that were bright on the first date and have gone dark, and objects that are bright on the second date that were not present in the first image. So once again, I'll pick my RGB add layer wizard. I'm going to do this first and foremost with the February 23rd to March 7th. So I'm going to pick the HH from February 23rd, then I'll pick the HH for March 7th for the green and the blue guns, and I'll load that up. So what we have essentially is uh, objects that are uh, appearing mainly as red are, are features that were bright on the first date, so they were bright on the uh, February 23rd and they've gone away and then the opposite of that is uh, blue features are bright objects on the second date that were dark on the first date. So what we can see right here as I'm, uh, I've zoomed into an area on, along the St. Lawrence is we can see differences in ice patterns. So some of this ice has uh, obviously moved a little bit between the two different dates so these are ice features that were present on February 23rd that are now gone. And here we have some ice features that uh, are, are built up from the, uh, the new acquisition on uh, March uh, 7th. Some other interesting features that we can look at uh, using this two-color multi-view. If we go to a uh, busy area, so if I zoom into some of the uh, shipping areas along uh, Montreal's uh, busy port here, so we can see some ships that are transiting through. So in this case, this looks to be uh, pretty obviously a ship that was transiting through on February 23rd, which is no longer present on the uh, March uh, 7th acquisition. So we can look at changes uh, such as those along the uh, waterway. Here we see some more. So we see some new ships here, some ships that were not there on the second date. And in general, we can see some changes inside this uh, oil oil storage location. This is in eastern Montreal and uh, what we have here are uh, large reservoirs that are used to uh, uh, to store oil and, and transfer onto these uh, cargo ships. 